hello, 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 and good evening, everybody. It is Tuesday, April 16th. I am Karone Bailey. I am your independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up. I'm the ATX lady, and I'm here this evening to present or to, to craft with you in the craft room. And we are gonna learn, or we're gonna play with the mirror image technique. Y'all, I have used this technique maybe once or twice. So if, and this was a long time ago. So this is a refresher for me. Um, so bear with me as I roll through this and we learn how to relearn, learn, relearn, whichever one is appropriate for you, the mirror image technique. Guys, if any of the products that you see that I'm working with tonight that you do and you, you like, please don't hesitate to shop in my online store using the April host code. As you can see, it's HZJ9H3J3. And when you shop in my online store, which every $50 purchase order that you make, um, I will send you a free gift just for, for, um, for shopping in my online store if you are new to my channel please don't hesitate to like share and subscribe and if you're a returning crafter buckle up grab your supplies and let's get to crafting come on into the craft room y'all and let's get crafting all right so this technique let me share with you i don't even know what i did with it so what the the effect that we're going with with air, mirror image stamping is when we have um, an image where we want to have two things looking at each other but there's one stamp so this is what it is that are the reversed image or mirror image stamping I don't know what I just dropped um, mirror image stamping does for you so this is a one single image that we use for it and we create a mirror image so we can have images looking uh, as if they're looking at each other so that is the effect that we are going to create with the mirror image technique all right let me share with you the products that we're going to use tonight we are using the inspirational sketches this is a little bird that we're using and this is from the Oh, this is a retired stamp set. Ooh. So I'm playing with my retired stamp set to, um, uh, to for this technique. But I tend to use for mirror image stamping something like maybe um, birds or people that I want to have looking at each other. Um, so that's, that's the purpose of um, the image that I'm using here. There are other images that you can use, but this is one that I really want to play with. Um, that I think we'll work with tonight. I'm also going to use the designer series paper uh, the, from the perennial lavender set. Um, so let's get started. Now what's important in this technique is having a stamp positioner and silicone and a silicone craft sheet. I know I have my stampin' up one I can't I don't know what I did with it but I have one somewhere, um, but I don't have it right now. So what we're gonna do, let me clean this off. So we're gonna use the silicone sheet. The silicone sheet uh, mat is used as a, um, a transfer element, okay? So what we need to do, let me grab my um, piece of cardstock. So I'm using a piece of cardstock that is a basic white that is um, eight and a half. I'm sorry, four and a quarter by five and a quarter. So this is a full quarter panel. And we don't need this just yet. Um, I am gonna use, so what I've done is I've already positioned my image where I want for it to be um, when I was practicing to, to do that first one. So we're gonna stamp the image on the silicone mat. Um, and then we're gonna stamp it a couple of times, okay? Because we want to get a really good impression and we have to remember that we're going to use this as our ink pad or as our, as our uh, stamp to transfer the image so we want to make sure that it's it's inked up really really well all right so here we go and we're stamping and i'm going to ink it up one more time 
Now the importance of using a stamp positioning tool is because once we put the image in the, the cardstock where it is, we know that generally we should always be stamping in the same position, and that is what we need to ensure that we have. All right, you might even need to do a third time um, just to make sure that we have a really, really good impression. And I'm going to go ahead and do it one more time. Now our Technique Tuesdays, if you remember, is primarily to make sure that we learn a technique. It's not necessarily to create a card, although we are going to create a card tonight, but our Technique, um, our technique Tuesdays are about learning a new technique. So now we're going to come in with this uh, panel, four and a quarter by five and a quarter, uh, five and a half, a quarter sheet, and really this image here doesn't... Um, really doesn't make a difference, okay? So what we're going to do is then we're going to stamp again, right, right here. See, we have this nice, beautiful image. And then we're going to take this guy out. And we're just going to turn this over. Now, why did we stamp on the back? Um, we just wanted to make sure we didn't have to add ink to that previous step, but we did. And so now when we stamp this position, this, uh, this time, we're going to create that reversed image. Look at that, y'all. Didn't that look like we used two different stamps? To create this effect and we did it with one stamp so this is a, just another technique to that you can use to create and ensure that your your stamps get a little bit of a longer um, look at that you can even redo that one more time all right if this didn't cuss I didn't come out well you could even turn it over and do it again all right so we're happy I'm pretty happy with what I have here then you just take a little bit of an alcohol wipe and clean your silicone mat and we're pretty much done with our positioning tool. And that's how simple this technique is. Um, can you use any other material besides a silicone mat? I believe you can. It just has to be maybe like some window sheets, um, the acetate, but it has to be, um, I don't know, porous enough, is that the right term, that, can, that it can transfer the ink very well. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and heat set my image. Going to add a little bit of color and then we're going to die cut. Um, we're going to die cut the image using a, an oval die. Okay. These go so much faster. So I'm participating in a swap. Um, if you guys like to do swaps, I do uh, run and manage a swap group on my Facebook group. Um, and one of the swaps for the month of April is the mirror image technique. So you are watching as I create this card for my swap partner. What is a swap? So what is a swap, you might ask? Well, a swap is where um, we participate. Um, I set the themes for the month. Um, I try to do a technique, a fancy fold, um, and a sketch every month. So you have your choice. You can sign up for one. You can sign up for all. 
and then from that swap what will happen is um, you will send you will create a card with that that month's theme and then you'll send that card to your swap partner and sometimes most of the times it's just to, I love seeing the multiple different um, projects that one can create using the same themes or the same sketch um, I just think it's amazing sometimes okay so now I'm just gonna add a little bit of color here um, because I do want to give it a little bit of a background um, I like to do my backgrounds in, um, I like to give it a little bit of a sky. So I'm gonna go grab my balmy blue ink pad. Let's bring our silicone mat back in here. Let's bring our silicone mat back in here. I'm gonna grab my balmy blue. just don't like like when I have stamped images I just don't like them to seem as if they're just kind of chilling out in a bare nothingness so I do like to give them um, you know if it's something that's sky related or earth related to give them those those kind of tones so with this balmy blue I'm also gonna kind of take it into the body of the bird just a little bit. bit of color all right now we're gonna go grab grab the the die so we can die cut our image what did I do with my die there it is and so I can fit it through the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. I'm just going to trim it down after I've um, aligned it where I want for it to go, okay? So I'm going to come in with my little snips. And now we're pretty much done with the image and the technique. That's how quick and simple that technique was. And so what I'm going to do is just die cut this out. And then we'll get to assembling our card. Okay. And again, I'm only trimming it off this way so I don't have to bring in the big embossing machine um, this cardstock uh, the four and a quarter panel just wouldn't fit into the the mini cut and emboss machine so I'm just cutting trimming it down just so that it can fit through um, the mini cut and emboss machine otherwise I wouldn't bother with this step and of course you know when I bring the mini cut and emboss machine in we're gonna do a little bit of shaking so our camera might shake just a little bit. So bear with me on that, okay? It is hot in my craft room. I'm not sure why. We're not even in the summer months yet and I am hot. Not, I mean, I know I'm hot, but <laughs> I know I'm hot, but that's not what I meant. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna need one cutting plate number one. We're gonna need plate number two, which we are gonna offset just a bit. 
we're going to put our stamped image on that we need to die cut. And now we're going to put another cutting pleat right over top. And then here we go. So I'm using um, Highland Heather as my accent color, my matte colors throughout this card. Because it is one of the colors, in my opinion, that's in the, oops, that's in the designer series paper. And we're going to use that to create our card. All right. So I'm also using, like I said, a piece of Highland Heather. Um, this piece ended up being about two and three quarter by uh, three and three quarter. So I did cut a mat layer that is four, three by four is the mat layer. And then I'm gonna use a corner rounder to round the corners so that I have a complementing mat, okay? So here's my piece of cardstock that's three by four. And I'm going to mat it. I'm going to go ahead, oops, wrong thing, and do our corner rounder. One, two, okay, that didn't go off. That wasn't seated properly. There we go. go and this one okay so we have our nicely rounded corners perfect all right so we've got our mat okay there's our adhesive This, ladies and gentlemen, is how quickly we did our um, mirror image stamping technique. All right, so to finish this card, this project, here's what we have. I'm going, I cut a piece of designer series that was four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm sorry, four by five and a quarter. And then I cut it in half. There's a piece that I think I cut it at two and three quarters. Correct. There's a piece that's two and three quarters by five. By four, I'm sorry, two and three quarters by four. And so the remaining piece is two by four, okay? And what I wanted to do, this piece right here is four and one eighth by five and three eighths. And I'm gonna map this, I'm gonna lay this on here, like so, and so, to create this mat. Now, if anybody knows anything about me, you will know that I'm never, I would never do that. I need to trim this into four by five and a quarter. That way I can go ahead and align those two pieces properly and then put the one piece on the mat piece, okay? So this needs to be four by five and a quarter. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add the pieces like so. Now, this is a this basic white panel right here is not is not a necessary step. It is necessary for me because I have e alignment issues, so it's always easier for me to have this this intermediate piece, okay? So all I did was cut this in a any any measurement that you wanted to, and then I'm going to flip one and keep the other uh, the same, okay?
everybody know I'm in my last class in my um, paralegal studies class for my paralegal certificate and um, this is the last class that I need for uh, to get my certificate and unfortunate fortunately or unfortunately I'm not sure how you look at it it is a required class somebody join me say hello um, it is a required class and so the instructor today just uh, the attorney today just posted um, one of our projects and we've got to do a 10 minute um, presentation um, presenting a position on a subject um, so this the topic that I selected was um, are you familiar with what the DACA, DACA program is? So I've got to take a position on the DACA program. What, what's the, um, you know, what all the fuss and muss is about the DACA program, why it's getting so much angst. I have to take that position and then be able to defend it for 10 minutes. Oh my God, you guys. All right, so I have a piece of um, sheer ribbon. I'm going to put that around here like so and I tend to if I'm using ribbon on a project you guys I tend to also um, put the ribbon around whatever the intermediate piece is so that that'll definitely be covered um, it'll be covered um, that's just a preference for my of mine you can do however you choose to but that is my preference as far as how I incorporate ribbon into my projects. Okay. So let's just snip a piece off here. And then let's just get this lay down here and then we'll be ready with this. Now, I know I've got a couple of birthdays coming up so I'm probably gonna make this a birthday card And then I'm just going to go in with my adhesive. So that I can lay this on my mat piece. Again, this basic white panel is not a required piece. Um, it is an optional piece. If you have issues with aligning like I do, um, I just use it to make sure that as much as possible, I keep things uh, fairly straight, okay? All right, so I did the matte layers about an, an eighth of an inch, um, one eighth of an inch, so it is four and one eighth by five and three eighths is the measurement for our mat. And then we're gonna lay this on a piece of basic white that is an A2, four and a quarter by five and a half. Okay. I'm excited about this card. I haven't done a, a mirror image stamped card in I, in I don't even know how long, but I'm excited about it. I saw how quick and how easy it is. And once you, once you break this technique out I mean, you can you go through your stamps and you can see how many different stamps you can utilize it with. On Valentine's Day, it's one that you can use for Valentine's Day if you have one bunny, but you wanna have two bunnies looking at each other, um, you know, that kind of thing. I'm gonna make some, uh, some additional projects, but I do um, with some maybe non-animals so that you can see what the project's gonna look like, all right? All right, so for the rest of the week, what do we have going on for the rest of this week? Well, this is my sister's birthday weekend. So I will be going to uh, New Braunfels um, to spend some time with my sister. So my third on Thursday, when we typically do um, case the catalog, I'm probably not going to case the catalog. I am probably going to do a paper pumpkin kit. Um, so... 
be prepared if you are a paper pumpkin subscriber um, to grab any one of those paper pumpkin kits that you want to work on I'm probably gonna work on the most current one that I have most recent one that I've received um, and try to work that together now part of that is going to be to uh, to work each of the designs one of at least each of the designs and then depending on time, maybe come up with a couple of, um, a couple of alternates. I will not be taking my entire craft room down to my sister's. Uh, so what alternates we create might be a little limited um, in, that, in that respect, because I'm not taking my entire craft room down to my sister's house. All right, so here we go. And this is what this looks like. Okay, and then all we're gonna do is we're gonna put our image right here, and it is almost 100%, all right, just like that. Gonna put this piece here. So, and then we're going to put another piece right here. Now I won't put any of the, the um, dimensional, my dog just came into the, the craft room, did you hear her? <laughs> um, I won't put dimensionals in the center because I need for it to um, not have that additional rise over where the ribbon is. So I'm cognizant of where that is. And then I'm gonna put this guy right here, right here. Now normally I do giveaways uh, with the card, um, of the card that I create during the video. And I will give you, it won't be this specific, specific card, but I will give you um, if you comment that you've shared, I will create a card and I will send it to you using this other one. So it'll be somewhat similar since we've already got that panel done. All right, now I'm going to go in with a little bit of Winka Stella here. I'm just going to... a little sparkle and shimmer I know this is exactly how I do it <laughs> this is exactly and precisely how I do that all right so here we go this is our mirror image stamped card I gotta put a sentiment on here thank you for everything grateful for you enjoy the journey not sure which one I'm gonna send yet as a greeting but I really just wanted to share with you the mirror image uh, stamping technique. What do you guys think? It was fast, it was quick, it was easy. I do, t uh, I do will tell you though that it's, for me, um, uh, having a stamp positioner is important. If you do not have a stamp positioning tool, um, you know, back in the day, we used to have a, the stamp positioner, you know, the little L block, uh, the L the L tool that you could use. You could also use that to create the mirror image, but it's so much easier and simpler if you have a stamp positioning tool. And, you might, and I prefer to use a silicone uh, mat or silicone sheet. I'll put the item number to the one in Stampin' Up in the description box. Um, and then all the all the, the the links to the products that that are current um, I will put in the description box for you all right you guys that's all I got for you tonight is this um, technique the mirror image technique I hope you enjoy it I hope you try it if you do try it I'm gonna put the link to the event that's on my Facebook page Feel free to pop on over there and put the product that you create, project that you create, 
using the mirror image uh, technique, share it with me in that event. I'd be, I would be honored if you would do that for me. All right, on that note, you guys, thanks for joining us this evening. Um, look for us later this week as we do a little stamping and crafting. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe my YouTube channel, my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. And I would love to see you again this week. On that note, y'all have a great evening and happy stamping.